Shalom, everyone. My name is Tony Pino, and today we are going to talk about the imputed righteousness of Yeshua. Uh, Yeshua's righteousness. It's something that uh, we can't achieve ourselves. And uh, there are many ways people try to define it and try to uh, create, obviously, the definition of it uh, by using scripture. And uh, what I would like to do is share you my view on what is the righteousness of Yeshua, how it is imputed to us. What does that mean? Uh, because I do believe many in Western Christianity do not have a correct rendering of the uh, righteousness of Yeshua. They don't have a correct definition uh, by the scriptures that they use and what they imply by those scriptures. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to let you guys be the judge for yourself. We are all seeking biblical truth. We are all seeking to understand covenants, uh, what it is to have a covenant relationship with Yahweh, with Yeshua. And uh, that's our goal, right? My goal is to follow Yeshua. He is my savior, my king, my God. Uh, and uh, I want to live in the kingdom according to his ways, filled with his spirit. Uh, I want to be able to minister the gospel of truth to people, uh, show them uh, what the kingdom is like and what the kingdom is, uh, because it's my life now. It's your life now. If you're a believer in Yeshua, we live after the kingdom. We are no longer slaves to the kingdom of darkness. We are slaves now to Yeshua. We are his servants. And with his servants, we desire to walk in obedience to him. And I pray that that is uh, your heart's desire too, because this is how we love Yah with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. So let's go ahead. I'm going to first show you how many within Western Christianity define this imputed righteousness. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how I define it and Again, you guys be the judge. Amen. So if you find that you like this video, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button there on the right hand side. If you want to go ahead and join my channel, see what else I teach there. Um, it's up to you. But uh, if you want to hit the like button, that'd be great. If you want to leave me a comment, whether you agree or disagree with it, go ahead and just leave me a comment as long as it's cordial. You know, it can stay up. Uh, I'm always open to hearing other people's views. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the imputed righteousness of Yeshua. This is going to affect his atonement, isn't it? Yes. All right. So here we, ha here we have uh, a definition given by the GenevaInstitute.org. And this is typically what I find how most people see imputation when we're talking about the imputation righteousness of Yeshua being imputed to us. And as you can see, uh, it means assigning a condition a standing or value to someone, all right? So in general, I don't have a problem with that definition. I probably agree with that definition, but then I disagree with how they apply it, which means Adam's sin and guilt were imputed to the whole race. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to all redeemed by him. The sins of the redeemed were imputed to the Savior, okay? Okay. So I am not going to agree with the idea that Adam's sin and guilt was now imputed to all mankind, that we are now all, even though we didn't, you know, do Adam's sin, we weren't there, we never committed that sin, Adam sinned on his own, now they're going to try and say, I'm guilty of his sin, it's been imputed to me, as if it's somehow been like infused into me, or something that my nature now is, you know, totally fallen unable to please. Yeah. I mean, all I can do is sin. That's all I can do. Um, I'm born with an evil, wicked heart only. That's all I can do. I can't do good. All right. And so, you know, this is how they kind of begin to really hammer this. This is how they show this. And then when it comes to the righteousness of Yeshua is imputed to me, that means it's just given to me. You know what I mean? It's decided by Yahweh to be given to me. And, um, you know, then I have this new nature and so forth. And so somehow or another, this whole thing just gets changed. I get freed from Adam's guilt. Um, and now I am the righteousness of Yeshua because of what he did on the cross. And then, of course, they try to use Romans 519. Speaking of the work of Jesus Christ, Romans 519 says, For as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous, okay? And of course, they want to make sure you know it's an act of Yeshua. It's nothing you can do. You can't earn it. I mean, really, it's not even your decision, right? According to them, most of them that I talk to, 
Yahweh decides who's going to get saved and who isn't. And so he somehow has to change your nature so that you'll accept him. But that changing of the nature, that's the imputation of the righteousness of Yeshua. That happens before you confess him, before you confess your faith. It has to be imputed into you first. You have to become, um, let's see here, how would we put it? You become regenerated, right? And it's because of the righteousness of Yeshua. So something has been, in a sense, infused into you, right? And then now you have this type of value. Now you have this type of condition. Okay. And I don't see the Bible teaching it from that point of view at all. Sorry. But uh, taking this one verse the way it is, we got to look at the context. We got to understand, of course, uh, the Hebrew scriptures, because that's what Paul is drawing from. It is Paul that is the one who wrote the book of Romans, and he's drawing from the Hebrew scriptures. He's drawing from covenants. And uh, so we need to go, of course, back to the beginning. So we're going to go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and we're going to see, is the guilt of Adam passed on to humanity where you are now guilty of another person's sin? Now, my position is, you know, sin is not some type of stuff. It's what you do, right? It's an action, okay? And what is sin? Sin actually is a violation of Yah's law, okay? So in a Quick understanding, and I'll go ahead and back this up when I dive into uh, Romans chapter 5. The uh, idea that you were made sinners, okay? Uh, For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. In other words, it's the pattern from which we see Adam. Adam broke Yah's law. The law is what made Adam a sinner, in my opinion, right? It was Yah's law, so it's, it's condemning Adam. The law that he broke condemns him. So Yah, holding to his law, he condemned Adam as a sinner, okay, which had to have him removed from the garden. But did that sin get passed on to us? No. All right. The many were made sinners. Obviously, every time you break the law, what? You are a sinner, okay? And uh, so what do we need? We need repentance. We need turning. But it is the law that tells you when you sin. It is the law that tells you you are a sinner when you break the law. Okay, And it's Yah's law. It's Yah's law that is holy, righteous, and good. So for as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. We follow that same pattern. But I believe we're accountable for our own sin. We're never accountable for another person's sin. Okay, And I think the scriptures easily show that. And that's what I want to show you first. We have to start back at Genesis. Got to be careful about reading our theology into a text. So we got to get it right from the scriptures, which is what Paul did. And if you understand Paul's letters correctly, they all come from a context. And that context is the Hebrew scriptures. And that's where he draws from. And that's where the work of Yeshua, uh, we get to recognize what that really is, because that's what tells us what Yeshua did for us. Amen. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. All right, so here we are with the fall. And we, here we are with Yah. He's going to talk to Adam here. He's going to talk to Adam. And he says, then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. So he breaks Yah's law. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it, and all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, For dust you are taken, and to dust you shall return. So notice the ground is cursed. Where do we come? We come from dust. Okay, so we receive the curse. It's the curse of death. That's what you're seeing here. Is there any guilt of Adam being passed on to anybody else? No. There's no sign of a guilt being passed on. Okay, there is a curse being passed on. The ground is being cursed, and we come what from the ground we are dust and to dust we shall return all right now evidence of this we can just go to hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 
And the book of Hebrews states, by faith, Abel offered to God a more ex excellent, sorry, excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. Wow, he is righteous. Why? Because he walked in obedience. Amen. God testifying of his gifts and through it, he being dead still speaks. All right. So was Abel righteous? Sure he was. Okay. Yeshua hadn't come. Is this talking about the righteousness of Yeshua? No, this is talking about walking in obedience to the commandments. Can you be called righteous? Is there a righteousness in the uh, walking in obedience to the commandments? Sure they are. All right. They're Yah's commands. They're holy, righteous, and good. And so Abel didn't say he was sinless, okay? But he is walking in righteousness. Now he has the ability to do that, okay? His nature wasn't changed and whatnot, but is he under the curse of death? Absolutely, all right? Cain had a choice. Cain could have done the right thing. He chose not to, amen? So he sinned, right? And even uh, when he was, um, you know, before he killed Abel, Yah came to him and he said, sin is crouching at your door. Okay? Its desire is for you, but you must master it. He could have turned. He could have not killed his brother. He could have walked away, but he chose not to. This flies in the face of what you just read and how people like to interpret imputation of Adam's sin and how it was imputed to you. What is our standing? What was imputed to us? What is our standing with Yah? Well, we are under the death curse. Amen. We are in a fallen world. The whole world is fallen. It's under a curse. And that's what you are born into. That's not something that Adam and Eve were created into. They were created into a world that had no sin. Okay. Had no death. But now we are what born into this. And that's a difference there. Okay. That's a difference. We're under the power of death. But does this mean you're born a sinner? No, it doesn't mean. Then when we mean born a sinner, we mean born with Adam's sin, guilty of Adam's sin. Okay. We are going to be, what, charged with our own sins. Now let's go ahead and continue. Deuteronomy 24, 16 says, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their fathers. A person shall be put to death for his own sin. This is the Torah. This is Yah's instructions in righteousness. This is how you walk in righteousness. You do not put people to death for someone else's sin. Why? A sin cannot be transferred to another person. It can't be transferred to another person. Okay? That person's sin is that person's sin. All right? It's not some type of stuff that gets transported. You violate the law. You sin. The guilt is on you. The guilt is on you. You sin. Okay. Not saying someone can't die in your place. We're not saying that. But just because someone dies in your place, does that take away your sin? That it was you that sinned. No, it doesn't take away the fact that you sin. Someone else is just dying in your place. Okay. So note, even the Torah teaches that someone cannot be found guilty of your sin or put to death for your sin. In other words, being counted guilty for your sin. That's what we mean by that. That means, hey, we find the father guilty. And so now we're going to make the son guilty and we're going to put him to death. No, nope, can't do that. Can I, put the uh, can I put the son to death for the sin of the father, meaning make him guilty of the father's sin? No, I cannot. All right, Ezekiel 18, starting with verse 20. Now, what's the job of the prophets? The job of the prophets is to bring you back to Torah, all right, to call you back to repentance. What are you, what are you repenting and coming back to? You're coming back to the laws of Yahweh, okay? That's extremely important to know. That's the job of the prophets. That was the job of Yeshua, to bring you back to Torah, amen? That's the job that prophets are called to do, to bring you back to the covenant, amen? And so Ezekiel says to the house of Israel, the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Okay, We are responsible for our own guilt. So you need to begin to take this interpretation, this understanding of the Hebrew Scriptures, into the words of Paul. Because Paul's not going to violate the Hebrew Scriptures, right? 
But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Okay. You are responsible for your own sin and you have the ability to turn. Okay. Most people that I talk to, when they say you're guilty of Adam's sin, you're born, uh, it's often called the doctrine of original sin. You are born wicked, depraved, evil, no desire to do good. Is that, is that the impression you're getting here? No, no, not at all. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, which includes repentance, right? That includes repentance. He shall surely live. He shall not die. That is a promise of the Lord. That's part of the covenant of the Lord. That's his responsibility to make sure you don't die. Okay. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done. He shall live. Hallelujah. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord uh, God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? Yah's desires for all to turn from his ways. He's not trying to cherry pick who will get saved and who wouldn't so that he can send somebody to hell. He desires all. Amen. He desires all this. This totally backs up uh, the scripture that says he's long suffering, not willing for any to perish. Right. Uh, do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? That's a question. He does not have a desire for that. Okay? Man has the ability to turn from sin. They have the ability to turn from sin. Can they be cleansed from sin? No. Sin brings defilement, okay? Not only does it bring death, but it brings defilement. You have become defiled. And so the only way, because this is where we see all throughout Scripture uh, in the apostolic writings, that Yeshua's blood washes you from all unrighteousness. That is something you cannot do, okay? But can you turn from your wicked ways and begin to walk a different direction? Yes, you have the ability to do that. And the commandments are not too hard for you. As Moshe says in chapter 30, um, you can read it in, uh, I believe it's, yeah, verses 11 through 14. The commandment that I give to you is not too hard for you. And he just gave them all the commandments that they needed to do. Okay. And so, yeah, it's not too hard for you. So uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 11. So it says here in verse 24, though. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, that means violate the Torah, violate the law. That's what the house of Israel was doing, right? All the righteousness which he has done shall be, well, shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he hath committed. Because of them, he shall die. Amen. What is convicting him? The law is. The law is making him a sinner. He's made a sinner by the law. He's not made a sinner by Adam. Nowhere does it say you're made a sinner by Adam in the Hebrew scriptures. You're not made a sinner by Adam. No, you're made a sinner by your own sin. All right, so it says here, yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear, O Israel, hear, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fair? And your ways, which are not fair. Okay. His laws are holy, righteous, and good. Okay. They uh, actually convert the soul, don't they? Psalm 19, I believe it's verse 7. The law does what? It converts the soul. Amen. All right. Verse 27. Again, when I, when a wicked man, no, I'm at verse 26, sorry. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a man, a wicked man, turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. All right? That's why you see righteous people throughout the Bible. You see wicked people, you see righteous people. Now, the righteous are just a remnant of the wicked, but you do see people who are called righteous in the Bible, okay? There is a righteousness in the law because it comes from Yahweh. It doesn't come from man. 
It's not man's righteousness. It's Yah's righteousness. And Yah says he will credit you as righteous. Amen. Uh, according to the law. Now, the righteousness that is credited to you according to the law, can that give you eternal life? No. Can that wash you clean? No. It cannot wash you clean. That is not at all what we're saying. This is where we have the work of Yeshua on the cross. All right, so verse 28, because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says the way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, it is not my ways. Is it not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. Okay, how's he going to judge them? According to the Torah. Says the Lord God, repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. He's asking them to turn. Do they have the ability to turn? Sure. He's not setting them up for failure. Okay. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies. And see how he's repeating what he said above? Says the Lord God, therefore, turn and live. They have the ability to turn. What is going to give them a new heart and a new spirit? Walking in righteousness. Walking in righteousness. They have developed an evil heart and an evil spirit by disobeying Yah's laws. Okay? This is going according to the righteousness of the law. Okay? We're not talking about eternal life here. They cannot give themselves eternal life. They can be promised eternal life because the prophecy of the coming one has been there. The prophecy of the promises to Abraham is there. Okay. Yahweh is only commanding them to do what they have the ability to do. Okay. And because the Torah uh, is lawful and righteous, converting the soul, it can do that. It can give you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. Can't give you eternal life. You got to read everything in context now. But yeah, you have the ability to turn and walk in righteousness. What does that mean? Not trusting self, trusting Yahweh. It's putting your faith in Yahweh. And that's why you're honored. That's why Abel was honored. That's why we can go to the book of Hebrews and see all of those who were honored because of their faith. Amen. They trusted in the ways of Yahweh. Look at Noah. All right. Noah had to build a boat. Right. What if he didn't build the boat? He had to follow Yah's instructions. He was a righteous person. He was a righteous person before he built the boat because he obeyed Yahweh. And the Bible says he was the only righteous person on the earth. If you look at Genesis 7, 1, which we will hear in just a few minutes. So, yeah, we're not seeing anywhere in the Bible where uh, Adam's sin is imputed to you. Okay. And the way that people think, right, what was given to you was the curse, the curse of Adam. Right? It is appointed for man to die once, then the judgment. We are all going to die. Whether you're a righteous person or not, you're going to die. What do you need to be spared of the second death? That's what we're fearful of. All right? That's what we need to avoid is the second death. All right, let's continue here. So we have here in 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. All right, so what came to us? What spread to all men? Death. That's what Adam gave us. Did the work of Yeshua conquer death? It did through his resurrection. So who's going to get resurrected? Both the righteous and the wicked are going to get resurrected. So this is Yeshua taking care of what? The death curse, right? As in Adam, all die. Right, we receive the death curse. As in Yeshua, all are made alive. We are all made alive. Some of them are going to go to everlasting life. Some are going to see the second death. They're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But what happens? What did happen to Adam that we all in Adam happened? What what happened there? Were we given his guilt? No, we weren't given his guilt. We were given the death curse. Yes, curses can be passed down from generation to generation but you can never be guilty of another person's sin. So Revelation 2.11, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I don't like that word. I like uh, Yeshua's communities. That's what the word ecclesia really means. Uh, he says he overcomes 
he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. That is what we're concerned about, the second death. And this is Yeshua speaking to us here. Okay, I'm using the New King James because I don't want to be accused of using a translation. Oh, that's not a good translation and so forth. New King James is a very good translation. A lot of people, even Western Christians, use it. So one of the reasons why I'm using it. But no, I don't like the word church um, for many reasons, right? The word ecclesia simply means assembly or congregation. It's the body of Messiah. Uh, and I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail on that one. So, all right, let's go ahead and continue here. All right, here is one of the famous passages. Of course, you saw uh, it was verse 19 and that we uh, talked about here in Romans chapter five, it's a very famous passage people try to take you to, uh, where it says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Okay, so what's the proper way to read this? Well, we got to read it in context. We already know that the Torah uh, says that you can't be guilty of another man's sin. Okay, that's very clear that uh, this idea of being guilty of someone's sin being passed to you or their guilt, it's not found anywhere in the scriptures. Okay. You are, be, you, you do become guilty of your own sin. Right. And so we all have an opportunity to what? Put our faith and trust in Yeshua. Okay. Now, what we need to do is go back to where Paul began. Paul begins in Romans with uh, this purpose of verse 19, where people like to take us to. You got to start. I believe you got to start with verse 12, Romans chapter five, verse 12. OK, and he, of course, he's speaking to Israelites. He's speaking to Gentiles here. So we're all included. Uh, he's talking to the assemblies there in Rome. And he says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Okay, nothing about the guilt of Adam being passed to you. Why has death come to you? Because of your own sin, right? Is this talking about uh, the curse of death? Well, let's read. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. Okay. So death came into the world through the one man. Prior to that, it wasn't there. And thus death spread to all men because all sin. Okay, so this is not talking about the curse that came upon all people. This is talking about death that spread to all men because what? You did the same thing Adam did. You broke his law. Okay, And thus death spread to all men because all sinned. It's just speaking a, a truth. Adam's sin broke the law that he had with Yahweh, which brought death to him. Okay, Separation from Yahweh. Why? Why are we now separated from Yahweh? For our own sin. Okay. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Okay. There we go with the word imputed, right? It can't be reckoned to someone when there is no law. Does that mean there was no law prior to the Sinai covenant? No. But at the Sinai covenant, you've got a marriage covenant. Okay. You got the birth of a nation and a kingdom. You got what? Israelites and Gentiles there. Okay, they both were there. You got the mixed multitude there with Israel, all becoming one with Israel, right? The kingdom of Israel is being birthed there at Sinai, not just a nation, but a kingdom. But prior to that, there were laws. I mean, let's look at Abraham. Abraham in uh, Genesis 26, 5, it says that he obeyed all the laws of Yahweh. Did he have the ability to do so? Sure, he did. Was he considered righteous? Absolutely. Absolutely. He obeyed Yah's laws and he was righteous by his what? Faith. It was credited to him as righteousness by faith. And that was expressed through his obedience. His obedience was the fruit of his faith. Amen. Uh, and so, yeah, we see here, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moshe, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Right. And so Adam was not created, uh, you know, with with the death curse or anything. It was it was uh, good. He was created directly from the hand of Yahweh. Amen. All of us are birthed, you know, through a woman. Uh, but no, he was created by Yahweh and brought forth by Yahweh. All right. In a very special and unique way. And so was Yeshua. Yeshua was sent from heaven. Right. And so he is God in the flesh. Now. 
It says again, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moshe, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense, many die, okay, okay by the one man's offense, many die. What is the pattern that we're seeing here? Because of your own sin, not because of the sin of Adam, but because of your own sin. Okay, It's showing the pattern of how people die. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense, many die, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Notice this is a gift. Okay. A gift that you have the free will to receive or not. And if you get this gift, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? The reason why you get this gift is you've made Yeshua king. You put your faith and trust in him. Okay. So you receive the gift. Now, what are you going to do with that gift? Are you going to cherish it and obey uh, what it's called you to do? In, or, in other words, make Yeshua king? Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you deserve the gift? No, you didn't deserve it. Did you earn the gift? No, nope. you didn't earn it. Yeshua earned it. And Yeshua can do what he likes with the gift. Amen. So, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. Okay. Again, showing the pattern. Showing the pattern. You break God's law, you get condemnation. We break God's law, we get condemnation. We are accountable for our own sin. It's showing you the pattern. This is exactly what Paul means. Okay. Take off the lenses of the doctrine of original sin because it's a false doctrine. Read it through the lenses of Paul here. Paul is what? A Torah observant Jew. He understands the Torah. He understands the words of Yeshua. Yeshua never taught against the Torah. He never taught you something different than the Torah. Okay. All right. Verse 16. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. So the free gift is offered to all men. Those who receive it and want it, they what? They don't deserve it. But can you receive it? Absolutely, you can receive it. All right. Just like man has the ability to turn from their evil ways and begin to walk in righteousness, you have the choice to receive the gift or not. It's not a gift you deserve. It's not a gift you can earn. It's just simply being offered to you. It's being freely offered to you, a gift that you cannot earn. Because why? What does the blood of Yeshua do? It washes you clean. And when you are washed, you receive the eternal life. You receive, you become in right standing. You, you now have been imputed the righteousness of Yeshua. In other words, you've been reckoned righteousness because of your faith. Because of your faith. Amen. You've been reckoned righteousness, not something you deserve. And that's the whole thing is when you do your faith uh, in Yeshua, you're denying self. You're saying, I can't do it. You're saying, I don't know. I can't. I don't have the strength. I can't wash myself clean. All right. Yeshua is a reflection of the red heifer. The red heifer purified them from death. It was a shadow pointing you to the reality, showing they couldn't do it themselves. They had to what, rely on the red heifer. This tells you that you have to rely on someone else. And that someone else is Yeshua. Okay, they couldn't just wash themselves clean. They couldn't go down to the Jordan and just wash themselves clean. No, they had to rely on an animal, but that was just a shadow. Now we rely on Yeshua. But did they have to put their faith and trust and walk in obedience? Sure, they did. Absolutely. Could they brag about that? No, not, not at all, because it was Yah that made them righteous because they walked in obedience. It was him that declared them righteous. Okay, just like it is him who declares us righteous when we put our faith and trust in Yeshua. All right, for verse 17. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of, gift, of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. 
Amen. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Okay. What are we talking about? Death reigned through the one. We're talking about the death penalty, right? The death curse. Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. What can take care of the death curse? What can take care of the guilt of uh, your sins? Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua not only takes care of the death curse, because that's on you whether you sin or not. That's it's the curse of death. And, you know, that that was a curse that came upon the ground. The ground was cursed, and you're made from the dust. Okay? And then, of course, what's the curse of death from your sin? All right? Yeshua takes care of both of that. Everyone's going to get resurrected, right? And only those who put their faith and trust in Yeshua will have their sins, what? Taken away. Why? Because you've been washed clean. Now, what was your responsibility? Repentance. Repentance. Okay? But the process is not fully complete. Now something has to be done that you can't do. You can't wash yourself clean. Okay. So verse 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. Okay. What does this say? Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. Why? Why? Because we sin in the same way. That's why. That's why judgment comes to all men, because what? That one offense, that showed us the pattern right there. That showed us how we sin, disobey Yah's command. That's how we receive judgment, okay? Are we guilty of Adam's sin? No, you can't read that into the text. Sorry, you can try and read into it, but then you violate the Hebrew scriptures. So, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Okay, Who's going to receive it? Those who accept Yeshua. That's because it's your choice. It was your choice to disobey God, so you receive judgment. It's your choice whether you're going to receive Yeshua or not. You're going to receive a gift that you did not earn. And you're going to receive a blessing that you could not do yourself. What could you do? Put your faith and trust in Yeshua and not yourself. Because it is the faithfulness of Yeshua that saves you. The faithfulness of Yeshua that saves you. It's not your faith that saves you. It's the faithfulness of Yeshua that saves you. Amen. Not your faith. Okay, You can put your faith uh, in whatever you want. That's not going to matter. What matters is what Yeshua did on the cross. Now I'm putting my faith in that, meaning it's his faithfulness that saves me. So, no, I'm not saying my faith saves me. It was the faithfulness of Yeshua that saves me. So again, verse 18, therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through man's righteous act, the free gift came to all man, resulting in justification of life. The work of Yeshua is the free gift. Amen. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. All men. Uh, the free gift is made available to all men. Okay. It's up to you whether you receive it or not. Put your faith and trust in his work and his faithfulness. So now we can see verse 19 much clearer. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. It's the pattern. It's the way things are done, right? Disobeying Yah's law makes you a sinner. That's how you become a sinner, by disobeying Yah's law. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Okay? Look at the pattern here. What does Yah demand of us? Put our faith and trust in Yahweh. His Work on the cross. That's my decision. His work on the cross to put my trust in that. I will be made righteous. Right? Meaning I will be made cleansed. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. It's the pattern, right? One man's faith and trust in Yahweh, his father. Yeshua deserved what he got because his faith and trust was always in Yahweh and not himself. So by me putting my faith and trust in Yeshua, I am being credited 
his righteousness. I'm being credited. It. It's being credited to my account. Okay. If I want to put my faith and trust in the way of Adam, which is what I, what I did, right? By me disobeying God's command, my trust, my faith and trust was in the ways of Adam. The way Adam did things, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to pattern myself after. No, what we're to do is pattern ourselves after Messiah Yeshua. We are to be conformed to his image. So our faith and trust is in him. Our faith and trust is in him, which is why we walk after him, which is why he taught us how to keep the Torah. Amen. So, yeah, understanding the words of Paul, you got to understand the Hebrew scriptures first, understand the Torah first, because that's part of the covenant. You got to understand covenants because covenants is what? It's responsibility on both parties, two sides, right? Each side had responsibility in the garden. Adam and uh, Chava had responsibility and Yah had responsibilities to keep his promises, to guard his law, make sure it's being instituted. Uh, correctly. And Adam, his job was to obey. Amen. It was a conditional covenant. Same thing with the Sinai covenant. That's what we're in with the new covenant, a conditional covenant. And our faith and trust is in Yeshua to wash us from all unrighteousness. Amen. All right. So another place people like to take you to is Philippians chapter three, basically verses eight through nine to show the imputed righteousness of Yeshua. And uh, when you read this correctly, now you got the proper lenses uh, that I've been showing you. Now, let's go ahead and read this in its proper lens, all right? Verse 8, more than I, Paul speaking, I consider all things to be lost in comparison to the surpassing value of the knowledge of Messiah Yeshua, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them garbage in order that I might gain Messiah and be found in him, not having my righteousness derived from the Torah. Is there a righteousness in the Torah? Absolutely there is. Please just go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 29. And you can see, is it verse 29 or 25? Uh, let's go ahead and go there real quick. All right, so here we are in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse 25. Verse 25, it will be righteousness to us if we take care to do all this commandment, which Yahweh our God, just as he has commanded us. There is a righteousness in following the law. Okay. But compared to the righteousness of Yeshua, you would I would give it all up. I would give it all up. It's garbage compared to his righteousness. Because the righteousness that is in the law, okay, that helps me to learn how to forgive. That helps me to learn how to walk after Yahweh helps me to learn how to repent and turn and walk in obedience. So th there is a righteousness there, but how do I make myself clean? When I get defiled, an animal blood can't make me clean. It only points me to the one who can make me clean. And so, and the one who ransomed me, he ransomed me from the kingdom of darkness. That's who I belong to. I was a slave to sin. I belonged to the kingdom of darkness. I belonged to Satan. I was his slave. I was his servant. And now I belong to Messiah Yeshua. I'm his servant. I'm his slave. That's where now following the law comes into play, walking in obedience, because I've made him king. But I couldn't make the switch, right? I couldn't make the switch and become clean. I was defiled by sin, and now I needed to be made clean. Could I turn and begin to forsake the kingdom of darkness and walk after righteousness? Sure, I could. But then I'm still dirty. I haven't been made washed. Only the blood of Yeshua can wash me clean. Only the blood of Yeshua could take care of the death curse. So, yeah, there is a righteousness in the law, but when it's compared to the righteousness of Yeshua, it's garbage, right? All right, so now we can see better Philippians 3, 8 through 9 with Paul. Because Paul was blameless according to the righteousness of the law. He was blameless, right? And so he says that... Uh, more than that, I consider all things to be lost in comparison to the surpassing value of the knowledge of Messiah Yeshua, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them garbage in order that I might gain Messiah. And to be found in him, not having my righteousness derived from the Torah, but one that is through trusting in Messiah, the righteousness from God based on trust. Okay, I'm putting my faith and trust in something I could not do. I could not accomplish myself, the work of Yeshua. And that puts me in right standing with Yahweh. Amen. That's admitting I can't do it. 
That's putting my trust in the faithfulness of Yeshua, his faithfulness. Amen. All right. So in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 2, 5, 2. I probably copied down the wrong scripture. Hold on one second. All right, now we got it right. It's 2 Corinthians, not 5, 2, but 5, 21. All right, where it says, for he made him who knew no sin to what? Be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Can anyone become sin? No, that's not scriptural. Sin is not some type of substance or anything. Can Yeshua become guilty of our sin? No, he can't. Can he offer up his body as an offering to, to the Lord for our sin? He's innocent. He remained innocent the entire time. He cannot become contaminated with sin. All right. There was no, um, you know, he never had a sin nature. Um, he never was contaminated with sin. He was without sin. That's why you had to have an animal without blemish, right? It was a ble without blemish animal. It was being offered in your place, right? And it was supposed to be about the cleansing power of the blood. Yeshua is a ransom. He's ransom. And it's also, uh, you know, you are bought with a price is how the Bible uh, talks, how you were bought with a price. Who were you bought from? Well, I was a slave to sin. I was slave to the kingdom of darkness. That should tell you where you're coming from, right? And so you were bought with a price. And I'm going to do a video on just that, where we talk about being ransomed, what that actually means, because you're not paying Yahweh a debt, okay? You got to go to the one whom you were kidnapped or whom you sold yourself to. Who did you sell yourself to, right? You sold yourself to sin. So there's a lot to talk about with that. But anyways, uh, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Most translations, other translations will say sin offering. It's understanding the context, right? Nobody can become sin. There's not a substance. Sin and the guilt cannot be passed to another person. So understanding the context here, very clear. But no, that's why they get this imputed righteousness thing. Well, the imputedness just means what? He gave himself for you, and now you've been washed clean. You've been washed clean. You've been ransomed back to Yahweh. Amen. He ransomed you. And so it is the precious blood of Yeshua that washes you. You can go to uh, 1 John chapter 1, I believe, verse 7, where it talks about the blood being uh, the, the blood is what washes you from all unrighteousness. Okay. All right. That's you were defiled. And so what takes away that defilement? The blood of Yeshua. All right, so, and then Romans chapter 4 is a famous place people like to go to, right? So, what shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt, Okay. Now, this is all about Abraham uh, becoming circumcised. The works here is dealing with circumcision, right? Abraham put his faith and trust in Yahweh before he was circumcised. That's why it was credited to him as righteousness. It was according to his faith, not according to his bloodline. So when we talk about works here, he could say, hey, look, I did these works. You should credit my account, all right? I am an ethnic Israelite. I, you know, received the... Uh, the works of circumcision, you can't say that, okay? Because he received the promises, he received the covenant before circumcision. So nothing could be credited to his account. He just trusted in Yahweh. He trusted in the word of Yahweh that he would bring forth the promise. Did Abraham deserve it? No, no. He was just as much a sinner as anyone else, okay? He was just as unclean as anyone else because clean defiles us, okay? He had the death curse on him. And so, no, he could not try to get it credited to him. Now, look, let's see here with um, King David. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man who, what? Whom God imputes righteousness. In other words, puts you in right standing. 
credits your account, okay, apart from works, apart from being, be, you know, the fact that you were a Jew didn't mean that you were automatically saved. It's not according to bloodline, okay? Neither could you do the law and clean yourself and become clean. No matter how much you obeyed the law and turned and walked in righteousness, you still were dirty. You needed the righteousness of Yeshua. It needed to be imputed to you, but it's not some mystical, magical stuff, right? It's simply a declaration. You were dirty. You are now clean. I declare you clean because Yeshua, what, died in your place, all right? He was handed over to Satan, and he ransomed you back. He was handed over to Satan. Satan had him put to death. And he ransomed you back. And then Yah rewarded him for his what? Handing himself over to Satan and being put to death. Yah rewarded him for his righteous act, something you could not do. And so now you're being credited his righteousness because of your faith. This is what we mean by imputed righteousness. Okay, It's not because of the sin of Adam that's been infused in you and that you have some doctrine of original sin, some sin nature, and you're unable to save yourself. Well, yeah, you're not, you're unable to save yourself because you can't cleanse yourself, but you always have the ability to turn from sin and begin to walk after righteousness. That is within your ability. And that is a gift of Yahweh too. It's not something you did in and of itself. That was how Yah made you. That was another gift of grace that he gave you. So it goes on to say here, verse seven, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Okay. Can Yah forgive you of your lawless deeds? Sure he can. Amen. And whose sins are covered. Okay, that's what the blood of Yeshua did. Basically washes you clean. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. If you've been washed clean, he cannot, what, impute sin to you, reckon sin to you. And that imputation of sin, I'm sorry, imputation of righteousness comes from the faithfulness of Yeshua. The faithfulness of Yeshua, not your faithfulness, but the faithfulness of Yeshua. You're putting your faith and trust in that faithfulness. Amen. And that's why he's reckoning you righteous. That's why when we're doing biblical terms, the imputation of sin or the imputing of righteousness. You got to go back to Abraham. Why was he reckoned righteous? His faith, putting his faith and trust in the faithfulness of Yahweh. Let's use biblical terms now, okay? That's what we mean by imputation. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised but while uncircumcised. See, that's what we mean by works. That's what we're talking about works in the context, whether or not you're a Jew, okay? So this idea of imputed righteousness to Yeshua. Now, the imputed righteousness to Yeshua, how do we take this? We take this as by faith and it will be credited to us, okay? That's how we become cleansed cleansed. All right. I'm sorry. I just had a verse uh, stuck in my head. We're going to go to it real quick as we close. We're going to close with this verse here. All right. I want to end with Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things. This is why the doctrine of original sin is false. Okay. Yeshua was not born with a evil nature. He would have to be if he was going to partake in the same things as us, okay? Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. Who did you sell yourself to? Okay? You don't owe a debt to God. You owe a debt to the devil. And who ransomed you back? Why did Yeshua die? He ransomed you, all right? Egypt. Uh, was in representation of the world, representation of sin, representation of uh, being under the power of Satan, right? And Israel was ransomed. And who was given up for Israel? Egypt was given up for Israel. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about the ransom work of Yeshua. Amen. The atonement. There's different views of atonement. We'll talk about that next time together.
But let's put this together. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he likewise, he himself likewise partook of the same things. Okay? This knocks out doctrine of original sin that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Amen. So now you can see who you sold yourself to. Now you are a servant to obedience. Obedience of righteousness. That means righteousness in the law, following the law. That's the laws of the kingdom. Amen. The righteousness in Yeshua, you can't earn. That's just a gift. That was imputed to you, mean reckoned to your account because of your faith. You put your faith and trust in the faithfulness of Yeshua. Amen. Could you do that? Did you have the ability to do that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That wasn't because of the fall of Adam. You, that, that ability to do that wasn't taken away from the fall because of the fall of Adam. Okay. What the fall of Adam did is it showed you the pattern. Number one, a death curse came upon all men, whether you sinned or not. Number two, it showed you the pattern. When you break God's law, you sin like Adam sinned. You come under condemnation. You come under death. Amen. You become defiled. So doctrine of original sin needs to be rejected. It's not biblical. Amen. Because then you run into this false understanding of the imputation of the righteousness of Yahweh. And you really think that Yeshua became sin on the cross. He literally became sin on the cross. Really? That's not in scripture. Sorry. Understanding that from its biblical context will tell you what Yeshua did. He gave up his life as an innocent person. Nowhere does the, the Bible teach that a sin can transfer to another person. The actual sin, the actual guilt can be transferred to another person. False. Okay. And then we're getting into all kinds of stuff. The wrath of God being poured out on Yeshua, all kinds of unbiblical stuff um, in, in the way it's explained. So. Amen. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this cleared some things up. We wanted to walk through the biblical scriptures and understand how we are to live after Yeshua. What kind of faith are we to have? What do we put our faith and trust in? What is our ability? Where is our ability limited? How come we can't earn our salvation? Well, we can't. Amen. It's the faithfulness of Yeshua that saves us. So every time I sin, I have to put my faith and trust in his blood to wash me clean. But it is my responsibility to turn. It's my responsibility to walk in righteousness, the righteousness of the law. Amen. But the righteousness of the law can't save me because if I break the law, I have to trust in the work of Yeshua. Amen. That is what saves me, uh, makes me clean and gives me eternal life. Amen. All right. Enough said here. Uh, I know I have to repeat myself a lot so that you kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, and I, hopefully it drives home the point. Amen. All right, everyone. Shalom. And until next time. Blessings.